it's Mike with Utastic. I'm at RailsConf 2014, and I'm standing here with Alexander Dima, who's going to be giving a talk this afternoon on how to cheaply and easily improve your memory footprint for your Ruby applications by moving up to Ruby 2.1. Well, thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah. Good to meet you, Mike. So the, the talk title, I, I couldn't quite recall it. It's a long title. What will, or what is the gist of, of the talk? Uh, so the talk is about two things, uh, mainly uh, Ruby 2.1 mm -hmm. and memory optimization. And the gist of my talk is that, in fact, what Ruby 2.1 does mm -hmm. is that it optimizes memory for you. Okay. So you can do it either, the, uh, either yourself or you can upgrade to, like to one the, or both. Like the copy and write implementation and, and things like yeah, that. And, and uh, most importantly, the generational garbage collection, of course. Okay, can you can you kind of maybe explain what those are? Because I, even I have a fumbling understanding of what uh, the uh, copy and write uh, really does. Uh, so what copy and write does is that if you fork your process, you will not uh, you will not have to copy your memory mm -hmm. so you so, don't immediately out or yeah. you just allocate the memory but you don't you allocate the memory you fork your process you have now two processes that use the same memory and they use it until you modify it okay and only then you actually allocate more memory okay so you're saying okay i'm going to fork this process and the the, the VM knows, okay, there's this handle I have to have, and then you start to write to it, and that's, oh, okay, now I'm gonna allocate that. Uh, this, uh, this, this handles operating, but uh, this is handled by operating. Oh, it's by the OS level, yeah. so it's... it's on the OS level, so you don't have to do anything with this. Okay. You just need to be copy and write safe. Right. And that's what, that actually was uh, introduced in 2.0. Okay. Already. Is that some, so if you said you had to be copy and write safe, is that something that developers, uh, Rubyists need to change the way they go about writing code? Or? Uh, not at all, unless they use, of course, uh, C extensions. Oh, okay. But not at all, Ruby does it for you. Okay, so if you're using native Ruby or, or the Ruby core, yeah. you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Okay, okay, but if it's if you're using a gem with with C extensions, you might want to look at that. If it's, uh, uh, if yeah. it's a you, sensitive, you might want to investigate more, mm -hmm. but usually it's okay. Okay, and uh, you mentioned the the garbage collector. There's been arguments recently about you know is it production ready? There's been kind of a snarky article about that. Um, you know maybe you can tell us a little bit more about what you're going to be talking about with the garbage collector. All right, so. Um Spoiler. <laughs> uh, before I tell, well, this is going to come out after. <laughs> okay, <your> great. <laughs> so it's not a spoiler. Yeah. Uh, what you get from two one is a huge improvement. Okay. So it is definitely production ready, and the improvement I usually see is about forty percent speed up just oh, really? for free. Yeah. What do, have you dug into? What is different about it versus previous? Um, so the only difference is. Uh, how long GC takes usually. Mm -hmm. So in old Rubies, uh, you had this huge memory allocated for Ruby objects, and the garbage collection uh, had to go through all this memory and uh, see if there are some objects to uh, delete mm -hmm. or to collect. Uh, and in 2.1, it usually goes through only new objects mm -hmm. that were created after the last GC. Okay. So usually you have like a limited set of uh, objects that garbage collection uh, goes through, mm -hmm. and that's why it takes less time. And in Ruby, it's called minor GC. Okay, minor GC yeah. is that's that's the new garbage collection. Yeah, so them. basically, uh, the minor GC is what yeah. is collecting new objects, and the major GC is the good old-fashioned GC that yeah, collects just, everything. Just cleans up yeah. the whole. So that's why uh, the garbage collection in two one is actually called generational mm -hmm. because you have these two generations. Mm -hmm. One is new objects, and another one is old objects. Yeah, and. 2.2 will have three generations, so it will be even faster. So what got you digging into into the internals of, of Ruby like this? Uh, well, we had uh, bad experience with memory usage. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, like if you deploy on Heroku, you have uh, 500 max limit, mm -hmm. and it's quite low for Ruby. 
And yeah. it's, it's so easy to take 500 mix. And if you do that, uh, there are two ways. You either stop using Heroku or buy their new PX. Uh, PX yeah, which is or, like two gigs, I think, for Dino. Uh, or, or it was a large number. It's a large number. Yeah. Um, and if you go listen to the interview with Schneems, that's that's he he says the number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and basically, what you uh, don't want to do is you don't want to spend that much money on hardware. Mm -hmm. uh, so instead, you can just optimize memory, and it's quite easy to do actually. Yeah, um, you know, looking at at. Uh, have you done any digging to compare your metrics using uh, Ruby 2.1 versus using JRuby? Is it something like you, you've looked at, or are you fully invested in, in MRI Ruby? Uh, yeah, at this point, <laughs> fully invested in MRI and not really wanted to switch. Okay. Um, the reason is that mm, I wrote several Rails applications. Uh, Rails 2 application, Rails 3 applications, Rails 4 application, and none of them worked with uh, JRuby, so okay. that's that's the way it goes for me. Okay, but I can say I, I, I have gotten a few out there, and, and it's, it's worked for me, but everybody's yeah. mileage, you know, there's that old saying, everybody's mileage, and it all depends on what we're, we're doing. Yeah, and what we're using, because mm -hmm. I'm using uh, C extensions a lot, um, I have proprietary extensions too, and that's why I yeah, so cannot use JRuby, and that's why I'm not quite interested in it. So you, you have a, a more of an engineering background? Uh, yeah. yeah. More of, more of the uh, the DHH, <laughs> right? That you you actually do have an engineering background. Well, if <laughs> software engineering, if we use DHH classification, yeah, it's software engineering. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. But but you've you've been you've obviously been thinking into C code for a while. Yeah, it, has that really helped you with your Ruby understanding C, so you can look at it and be like, oh, okay, I see where the abstractions are. Right, and I actually done a lot of C++ programming mm -hmm. in the past, and I enjoyed that, <laughs> unlike most people. <laughs> you were uh, a different breed then. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I'm, okay, uh, when I see the problem with Ruby, I just go ahead and read the source code. So yeah. That's what I yeah. did. Uh, so, so again, going to kind of what the theme of the original keynote was, is, is the reading of the source code and, and having you know, building up some additional skills outside of, of simply being a Rubyist. You know, not just saying, oh, I'm a Rubyist and I, I know Ruby, but knowing how some of that lower level languages works, it's been, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been, worth the investment. It, it is a good investment, definitely, mm -hmm. because you, you come to understand how it works. Yeah. And why it behaves the way it behaves. Yeah. That's important when you when we optimize things. Like mm -hmm. to really optimize you need to understand why it is slow. Like, right. uh, without this you, you just cannot optimize. Yeah, and avoid the cargo culting. Yeah. Because that was uh, I do understand that uh, also the memory uh, uh, like the old Twitter uh, environment variables that people would use to override the garbage collector mm -hmm. or memory or the number of objects that can be allocated bef between garbage collection. I, but that's also been fixed in 2.0 or 2.1. Uh, 2.1 uh, actually increased uh, memory limits. Yeah. Um, so like most people do not want to tweak these variables anymore uh, and what I've seen recently that some people do and they do it in the wrong way right so if you have that those old GC environment variables and you're upgrading to 2.1 you might want to look at taking those out or determining what they are the new defaults are yeah and then like that's the part of my talk yeah. about new defaults and uh, like do I really want to you know, yeah. change them? Yeah. Okay. And by the way, speaking about cargo cult, um, another way that uh, Ruby community and especially Rails community mm -hmm. don't want to learn is SQL. Yeah. Yeah. And like, come on, <laughs> SQL has been there for forty years, and 
and web frameworks come and go come and yeah. go and sql is still here <laughs> and it's such a good investment if you want to improve your performance as well yeah yeah uh, yeah it still sit on the porch giving the old uh those little those little web frameworks that are rolling by and they're skating boards and they're roller shoes <laughs> yeah i understand that using camel sounds cool but at the end it's the same playing old sequel right but written in ruby right it's generating the sequel yeah, it's just like you know you're people uh people complain about using coffee script because they say oh it's just generating um uh, javascript but a long time ago people were saying oh why am i using an arm it's just generating the sequel mm -hmm. and you know, it, there, there's pros and cons to that. It's yeah, like, right. okay, you can write code a little bit faster now with the ORM, but we forgot about uh, SQL. I wonder if that's going to be the future with all these abstractions on JavaScript. They're, we're going to have people that don't even know JavaScript because they only know these abstractions. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's a question that maybe we'll find out in well, the next 20 years. It's more like... Uh, not a question of whether you need to choose between two, mm -hmm. but uh, you'd rather use both right. when appropriate. And like, some things are just not good to do in Ruby. Mm -hmm. And Ruby will take enormous time to, to do calculations, for example, if you have large data sets. Mm -hmm. So that's why you should not forget completely about SQL because this is the thing you want to use at right. some point. I'm not going to say that, okay, just forget about Active Record. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do not use any uh, models. But no, it's have a toolbox and have more than one tool in it. Right. Yeah, yeah, you just need to have several tools. Yeah, sometimes you just need a hammer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, well, thank you very much for taking okay. the time to speak with me. I really thank you very much it. for having me. Thanks. Thanks. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way! Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.